Outdoors Chats today with Freddie Bigler and Michael Romay. We are going to talk about the art of service with our two legendary concierge. Hi, guys. Hi, Trish. Hi, Trish. You have to live up to that legendary now. Yes, that's right. We'll try. <laughs> okay. Um, let's start with a quick definition. Excellent service is, go. Emotion. Emotion. Why emotion? Because as my friend and mentor Holly Steele always says, service is a feeling, and it really is. It's an experience. It's an emotion. It's something that's felt from the person delivering the service or the general atmosphere. Okay, Freddie, excellent service is? A connection. And for me, it's all about connecting, um, again, emotionally, on an emotional level, but also going partly on the journey with the guests, and, but not being intrusive, but letting them know you're always there for them. And one more definition, and I know you've both, both experienced this. Subpar service is? Apathy. Ugh. Laziness. Again, it's an emotion, unfortunately, than a negative emotion versus a positive emotion. Okay. You know, this notion of serving others, of being a helper in essence, I would think is a core personality trait. Did you guys have this as kids or did you develop it over time in your careers? I think I had it as a as child. I was very fortunate also to grow up in a very European house where hospitality was emphasized. And so I learned to treat everyone visiting the house as the number one priority. And, and I think this concierge instinct and innate uh, gift that we have is something that we really are born with. That, that is really my belief. How about you, Freddie? Well, my childhood is much different than Michael's. So, and I'm sorry to say this, but I am an adult child of an alcoholic and we love to please everyone. So I have actually, it's my nature. I just love to make everybody happy. I'm the peacekeeper. I wanna see things happen for people and I wanna see the reaction. So I, I live for that. You know, Freddie, I'm surprised with your family legacy in politics that you didn't wind up in politics somehow, but maybe in a way it is politics what you do to keep your constituents, AKA guests, happy. I think it is. I think it's politics in a controlled environment. And also, you know, in representing, I'm more an ambassador in politics because I'm the ambassador to my hotel and to the guest experience as well. And tell us about some of your family history. It's really interesting. Well, it's interesting. My great great grandfather was the governor of Pennsylvania. And at the same time, his brother became the governor of California, but neither knew about it until they read about it in the newspaper, because this was in the 1850s. <laughs> so, yeah, I do have an interesting family background. Lake Tahoe was named Lake Bigler at one time after my great great uncle. And uh, governors being Brothers being governors has only happened, I think, three times in history. That's the Rockefellers, the Bushes, and now you know the Biglers. And the Biglers, wow. Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. So, Michael, you are the youngest of seven children. What yeah. in your family dynamics prepared you best to be a concierge, do you think? I was very fortunate in the fact that I had older parents who were able to take me with them wherever they went, which included lots of travel, and particularly because my father's family in Italy and Switzerland were there. From a young age, I was able to visit and absorb the culture and learn different languages, and, and I became very, very passionate about the world of travel and tourism from a very young age, really because of my parents. Okay, so here's a little stat that I love. Psych psychologists at Princeton University did this study. 
and they concluded that it takes only one tenth of one second for someone to form an impression. So what do you guys tell your different teams in how to form a great impression? I think it's all about that smile and body language as soon as the guest walks up to the desk. It's just a welcoming impression. And then you have to build on that. I, I agree. It, and it's eye contact. Normally, you could just look at someone and you just know. And that comes from years of experience of being in that place meeting people, as well as this innate ability that we have, which is our gift as a concierge. So when you guys walk into a hotel, how long does it take you to pick up a vibe and if things are working smoothly or not? Probably just a minute, I would say, especially if it's a busy, active hotel. It, it really, it's, it's very quick because the minute you, first of all, a property could be beautiful, but the life that's breathed into the property is it's, it's the staff. And I know instantly by looking at the staff whether I'm going to enjoy my stay or not. What are you looking for exactly? Well, I look, I want, I want to be recognized. I want them to acknowledge my presence. I want people to look up. I want them to smile. Of course, I'm looking for cleanliness and all of that. But if I see the body language and the tone set by the staff is a really good one and a, a positive one, I, I just know it's going to be a great hotel. So, Michael, Freddie's talking about body language. What, what do you guys mean by that? How do you want people to comport themselves? People send a message without speaking. It's the yeah. same principle as when one goes to a bank, when, when one goes to a store to return an item. You enter and you observe and you think, should I go to this person? No. Should I go to that person? Yes, because they look like they're going to help you. And, and how do they look like they're going to help you? They're engaged, they're smiling, they're informative, they're professional, and that's what one observes. And that's, the, and that's an attraction unto itself. So when you guys walk into a restaurant or even a department store, you're noticing all of these things just because it's now your nature? When I walk into a department store or a restaurant, I will look for that person. I watch everyone's interaction. What service professionals need to understand is that they're on the stage all of the time. And that everyone is gonna watch how they're, be, they're treating other clients and guests and they're gonna go to them rather than the, the one that's hiding behind the cash register or looking down.